This is Scott Condit with The Armory Life, and one of my prime preparedness concerns is what happens if I'm on the road and it hits the fan? Now that could mean car trouble, severe weather, a war breaks out, or something even more out of this world. In any event, I always hope for the best while preparing for the worst. That's why I have a 24-hour get-home bag packed in my truck. With the contents of this one bag, I'm better prepared to get home to my family, on foot, if needed. I'm going to show you what I've got packed inside my personal get home bag and give you some tips on how you can add your own GHB to your armory. All right, so I'm going to take you off grid slightly here. We're going to unpack the whole pack. I'm going to show you what's inside and uh, give you an up close and personal overview of what I've got stored inside of my 24 hour GHB. Let's get to it. All right, first things first. We got the Rush 12 pack from 511. I love 511's gear, make no bones about it. I'm a huge fanboy because I've met with their engineers at SHOT Show and previous expos, and the guys and gals down there love gear. They just are gear hounds, but they're gear heads as well. They put so much care and consideration into every aspect of every piece of kit that they've ever made that I've ever owned and used from clothing and apparel to gear. Um, just a big fan. The zippers are primo. Like you'd have to try your hardest to break them and you're still probably not gonna break the zippers. Uh, the other thing I love about the 511 Rush 12 pack is they give you so many compartments for admin, for uh, compartmentalizing your storage, for just knowing where every piece of kit is you get to customize it and they give you every option under the sun to do so so again no more about that the pack just make sure you select a very sturdy and durable one biggest recommendation is go out there and test it go on a day hike uh, not just a you know walk around the block it feels good put it back in your truck or wherever you're going to be storing it take it out and put some some use through it give it some abuse really test it make sure your straps don't fail make sure it's not chafing if the pack sucks that's the whole foundation of your get home bag. So make sure it's a good one. All right, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna open up the main compartment first and throw down one of my favorite pieces of kit in here. This orange survival camping tarp. It's orange on one side and reflective on the other. You can use this to create a lean-to shelter. You can have your campfire going. This is gonna radiate the heat right back onto you uh, like a big reflector. And on the orange side, if you're trying to flag someone down, if you're trying to alert someone, that works. Also from the air, if it's in, you know, like a search and rescue situation, the orange and the reflective, both positive benefits to this. Very durable, keeps you very dry uh, if it's raining. And again, the added heat bonus if you have a fire going. So let's lay this guy down, probably orange side up and then I'll unpack the rest of the gear on top of it. All right, starting from the front pouch, working our way in. In this front pouch, I keep stuff I might need to throw on first. A good sturdy pair of gloves. These guys have reinforced knuckles. I have a little admin pouch with printed street maps in my nearby areas, along with a pen to leave notes or make notes. I also have some zip ties, cordage, you can use these to lash things to your pack, to repair things, uh, to secure anything you might need to. There's some of the molly webbing on the outside of this kit. And if you come across any wily road warriors that need to be restrained, you got them for that too. Hygiene kit. I got toothbrush, lip balm, uh, some dude wipes, because you never know. Also just have some sanitary sterile wipes here. Great stuff to have when you're on the go, feeling a little grimy. Those things can really boost morale to have. In this kit as well, we got an N95 face mask along with a rain poncho. Again, this front pocket has all the things, you know, if something hit the fan, I'm going to go to this pocket first, throw on some gear, and get on the move. Additionally, in this front pocket, I have one element of my medical kit. Now, my basic trauma and first aid kit, I keep on the outside of my pack. It's a quickly detachable. I can throw it to a buddy or a fellow traveler if I happen to, happen to be with one. But this also has some surgical tools, basic stuff, forceps, things like that. And this one 
is from our friends over at BattleBox. They included the rip spool field repair kit. This has a really cool twine thread uh, tape kind of combo around the spool, along with a nice, I think, 16 gauge needle. So that's uh, awesome if you're having to repair your pack, if it does break down. And in a pinch, I don't know if you'd want to use that for stitching yourself up or not, it might be a bigger needle, but uh, you know, when emergency strikes, you make do. It's a backup. Additionally, in this kit, I have a headband here from 511. This guy came with what I have on the side of my pack here, my favorite flashlight in the entire world, the HL XR1. You can take this off, snap it into your headlamp, wear it on your head. Over a thousand lumens. Um, it's got a red light mode for low light signature. It's got multiple settings for, I believe, high, low, medium, and strobe. And again, this is the Response HL XR1. Just an awesome, innovative light, bright as heck. Also on the outside of my pack, working our way inward, multi-tool. This guy's the LE EMT first responder tool. That thing has everything you might need pared down. So you've got a Tonto blade, you've got a screwdriver, you've got a little hex wrench, you've got pliers, and you know, the basics, things to keep you on the move. Not the whole toolbox, just the basic things you might need while on the road in a get home situation. Also on the outside of the pack, as we're working our way inward, got a chem light out here. It's nice just to have one ready to go. Carabiner, you never know if you want to lash anything else to your pack. And I got one of these handy dandy little USB solar charging stations. You got two ports. If your cell phone works, keep it charged while you're on the go. But this guy also has a flashlight built into it, which I love. Threw some Velcro on the back. 511 Rush Bulb Pack already has Velcro up top here and it sits really nicely right there. So when I'm going in the Arizona sun, should the conditions be sunny, I'm charging on the go. Again, I got a trauma and first aid kit on the side here from my medic. That thing is awesome. Comes with a great tourniquet, comes with some basic trauma and wound care provisions inside. I supplemented it with everything from extra ibuprofen, aspirin, uh, and so on. Basic band-aids, moleskin in case you get a blister. You can get a lot of pre-made first aid kits out there. I highly recommend you pick one up and supplement it to your needs. Also, don't forget to include any prescription medications. All right, top compartment here. I like to keep my communications gear. I've got two Baofeng radios. Just in case I'm with a party, I can give one to somebody, a buddy, and uh, stay in communication with them. These are pre-programmed with weather alerts, uh, emergency channels, all that usual stuff. I've also got it pre-programmed with a few buddies who also have similar models of radio along the route and they know what channels I might be trying to reach them on should I need to. Uh, a nice addition on this guy, you can tell the difference. This has a long range extender. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. You buy one, you supplement it. For a little radio that costs about 30 bucks, definitely extends the range, makes it a great value. Next pocket and a quick topic, food. We're not going gourmet guys. 24 hours, you're trying to get home, you're staying on the move. I have one package of Mountain House freeze-dried food in here just in case my trip takes me longer than I hope. But my go-to is going to be protein bars, Cliff bars, we got about six of them in there, about 260 calories a piece. And I also pack some of these cool sports beans, uh, they're Extreme Sports Beans by Jelly Belly. What does that mean? And some of these energy chews. Basically they're loaded with vitamins, nutrients, they taste good, and they've got about 50 milligrams of caffeine per serving. So for me, if the Starbucks are all on fire, I'm gonna go to that and get a little, uh, you know, a little extra energy on my road. Keep my morale up, they're tasty, why not? Small enough to not take up too much space or weight in here. Beyond that, little small camp stove, tea light camp stove, you can use it to boil water, purify it if need be. You can also cook that meal in there. So for now, this guy's in the pack, it's small, it's ultra lightweight. Next, since we're on food and water, I love this water bottle. It's got a life straw built into it. You can scoop up water with it, put the lid on and drink straight out of the straw and it should be filtered and keep you safe. Inside of this, I've got a little eating kit. It's got like a spork, um, a bunch of water purification elements and tablets. I also have some emergency and some liquid IV in here. Keeps that funky tasting water if you do need to chemically purify it, not tasting so bad. 
and again gives you a little boost and this is hydration bladder capable that you can put inside of here and i usually do just make sure you keep that clean when you fill it with water use a little bleach solution um, there's all sorts of guides online on how to do that properly just make sure you have clean water in there and cycle it out every three to six months at a time depending on your conditions i keep about a liter and a half on board in my bag at all times so i know i'm just ready to literally grab this and go that covers it for food and water for the most part beyond that this sack right here what's inside the, what's in the bag everyone wants to know what's in the bag it's a spare pair okay this is a spare pair of pants shirt underwear socks and one of my most favorite survival items ever a buddy taught me this thanks tim this is a shemog it's awesome if you're cold you wrap it around you like a scarf if it's hot out you put it over your head and keep yourself shaded if you bust your arm up you can use it as a sling you can carry stuff in it 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 is just a versatile tool keep one in your pack you'll use it more than you ever think you will this one is one of my favorites it's also fashionable you know post-apocalyptic fashion shows are a thing but you stuff it in a compression sack because you don't want all that taking up too much space in your pack cinch it down keeps it waterproof you've got it in your bag okay this guy right here save your equipment little admin pouch it keeps all of one type of gear in tow here this is fire and illumination i've got a bunch of chem sticks chem lights i have a tinder shaving kit i have some lint from my dryer some of these wet fire fire starter pucks basically if i can't start a fire with this i'm doomed so this is everything i need to start fire also some illumination tools and i also packed one little kit in here that has an emergency survival blanket this i think i got at walmart for like five bucks emergency survival blanket fire starting implements a bic lighter because why go bear grills survivor man shaving down sticks and you know trying to whittle things to make a fire use your bic guys be smart <laughs> so this has a bic lighter in there a um, little button compass which is a nice add-on for navigation you put it all in a pack like this a little save your equipment admin pouch and there you go fire now for sleeping i hope i don't have to sleep during the 24-hour period but if i do i've got this guy from kifaru this is just a little bivy tent it's compact you squeeze the air out it gets even smaller so i got the tarp for one this guy i've got a bivy tent if i need it full enclosure and if i'm feeling like staying up off the cold ground and away from critters this little guy right here is a hummingbird hammock but again each one of these is a form of shelter if needed backups to backups these little tent stakes are great i just packed these in here just in case uh, my tarp was blown away a second ago i wish i'd remembered those that would have been helpful i could have staked them in each corner now the wind has died down and you know also for the shelters and for a number of other reasons cordage is extremely important 550 paracord got 100 feet of it you can separate this guy and on the inside there's a number of smaller strands that you can use for smaller detail work just paracord google it look at the youtube videos on the multiple uses for paracord trust me you're gonna love this for everything beyond that up top i typically keep this felt line pocket filled with a spare pair of sunglasses because in arizona the sun is brutal that's why i keep my favorite shades here from dylan optics on my eyeballs because they're sensitive okay i'm a sensitive prepared guy all right guys and there is actually one more pocket on this bag that i did not dig into it's up here above the solar panel check this out inside here i got a little backup to the backup packed one of the good old 511 rapid l2 lights four settings uh, high medium low and strobe and just an awesome awesome handheld light super durable aluminum construction shock you know resistant rated waterproof rated water resistant rated i should say and uh thing is just a beast so love having a backup to the backup speaking of it's nice to have a backup phone charging cord for your phone to run to that little solar panel on the front of your gear and this guy is super handy just a little emergency radio on top we've got solar panel so that charges via the sun but you can also mechanically charge it by taking out the hand crank give it a charge and power it up see it says charged right there wow 
not exactly a Bose surround sound system, but if you need some emergency updates and they are transmitting, you can now be receiving. So that's cool. Now let's talk self-defense on the road. Hopefully you'll only be on the road for 24 hours or less, and you'll be avoiding confrontation at all costs along the way. However, desperate people in desperate situations do desperate things, and you never know what situation you may come up against. This is why we carry every single day. My EDC is a Springfield Hellcat OSP, loaded with Black Hills Ammunition Luger 9mm 124 grain jacketed hollow points. This is great defensive ammo and I train regularly with the Hellcat, so I know how reliable it is and am comfortable, competent, and confident with this gun. That's exactly the kind of gun you want on the road with you in a situation like this. Beyond the 11 plus 1 rounds making this a great on-the-go gun, the Hellcat also has a compact form factor, it's lightweight, and I enjoy the slide serrations which make it easy to rack, especially in intense situations when adrenaline might be flowing. Much like your GHB, it's better to have your EDC always on you in case you need it, rather than not to have it when you might need it most. Again, this is Scott Condit with the Armory Life. Thank you for taking time to check out what's inside my 24-hour get home bag. I hope this has been helpful to you and that you might consider making a GHB part of your armory. Be safe out there.